Dear friends, welcome to our Eucharist for the second Sunday of Lent. I am here in St Paul's with John Schultz recording the service. Some warmer and sunnier days have brought with them a government roadmap out of this nightmarish situation we have been in for almost a year now. I felt hope viscerally deep down in my body this week and it has lightened my soul. Now we need a bit of patience as we move cautiously from step to step. Please do, as we go through the Eucharist, pause at appropriate points to sing the hymns that are indicated on our welcome sheet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please do sing our first hymn, Awake, my soul, and with the sun. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Second Sunday of Lent. Ever faithful God, you were well pleased with Abraham's obedience and you accepted the sacrifice of your son who gave himself up for the sake of us all. Train us by Christ's teaching and school us in his obedience, that as we walk his way of sacrifice, we may come to share in your glory. We ask this through Christ, our deliverance and hope. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. 
so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Please do pause and sing our gradual hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my favourite birthday cards was given to me some years ago by my former PA. It depicts the devil sat up in bed reading the Bible and he's saying to himself, a bit harsh, a bit harsh is how we might feel about Jesus' response to Peter in our Gospel reading. After all, Peter is the one who has just got it right 
when Jesus asked his disciples who people said he was, Peter gets it right, you are the Christ. And now when Jesus explains that the Messiah must suffer and die, Peter is understandably upset. Okay, he got that bit wrong. But to call him Satan, that's a bit harsh, Lord. I think the extremity of Jesus' response is aimed not really at Peter, but at himself. It takes us right back to his encounter with the real Satan in the wilderness when he was tempted. Tempted to be the kind of Messiah that was expected rather than the kind of Messiah he was called to be. The Gospel of Mark pivots on this moment this moment with his disciples. From now on, Jesus will be making his way to Jerusalem to die. How hard that must have been for him. And his reaction to Peter probably reflects the depth of his longing to avoid it. He does not want it to end that way. But he believes that that's the way it must be because of the kind of Messiah that God has called him to be. Despite being so close to Jesus, Peter is still stuck in previous ideas of what the Messiah should be. He can't leave those ideas behind. The greatest challenge of being a Christian, I always think, is that we're dealing with a God who is alive and restless. God does not get stuck and he does not expect us to do so either. Abraham was called by God to up sticks and leave his home country. At the age of a hundred, his wife being 90, God informs them that they will have a child. Abraham laughs. It's ridiculous. It's not the way things work. St Paul was called to proclaim that salvation in Christ was not dependent upon first becoming Jewish. And he uses the example of Abraham in his arguments around that. Abraham received the covenant, the promise from God, before the law was given. It's hard for us to appreciate how radical Paul's argument was. Paul has had to leave behind much of what he had been taught and much of what he had lived because of his encounter with the living God on the road to Damascus. Despite his encounter with the living God in human form, Peter is not ready to let go of his preconceived ideas and move on. In one of his writings, Pope Francis talks about the church as a church which goes forth. Apparently, the original Spanish is better translated as a church in departure. Either way, it suggests that the church is constituted to move, to be permanently leaving behind, to keep up with God. 
I've mentioned before how I think the poet R.S. Thomas gets it when he describes God as such a fast God, always before us and leaving as we arrive. He also noted, we, we never catch him at work, but can only say, coming suddenly upon an amendment that here he had been. We have to keep moving if we are even going to find out where God has been, never mind where he is. Each week we come together at this Eucharist to be constituted and to offer ourselves as the body of Christ on earth. And each week, the Eucharist ends with a dismissal, which recently we've varied as a command to stay during these COVID times. It's a variation on the Latin, ite missa est, which is often erroneously translated as go the mass, the Eucharist is ended. In fact, it translates as go, it has been sent. What has been sent? The spirit? The church? Whatever, the command is clear. We can't stay here, static and comfortable in our current ideas and certainties. God has already burst out the church doors. We must chase after him into the world. Go may sound a bit harsh, but God is already ahead of us. From the beginning, God has had a method to poke his people into movement. Prophets. Men and women who hold up mirrors to their society and dare to suggest that God may be calling us to move our thinking and or our doing. We're currently surrounded by prophetic voices challenging white privilege, challenging our thoughtless exploitation of the earth. We, as individuals and as church, need to be moved by these challenges, to come to a different place in our thinking and acting. But here is something even more scary than having to move beyond comfortable positions. By virtue of our baptism, you and I are called to share in the prophetic nature of Christ. As a church, how do we, the people of St Matthew with St Paul, exercise that prophetic ministry in helping people to, de to depart and find God in new ways of thinking and doing. What do we have to say to the wider church and to the community at large that makes them think Oh, they've gone too far. And if no one says that about us, oh, they've gone too far, I would like to suggest that we probably haven't gone far enough in our search for God. Amen. Our intercessions this week have been written by James Clay. Let us pray for the church and for the world 
and let us thank God for God's goodness. Father, we pray, be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings, be our guide. Through endeavour, failure, danger, Father, be thou at our side. As the springtime emerges from the shroud of winter, warm our hearts and instil in us fresh hope. Lighten our footsteps through these days of Lent that we may find you anew. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Creator God, as we wake to our first drink of the day, we pray for the woman who has already walked many miles to collect safe water. as we choose food from the supermarket shelf. We pray for everyone and everything in the food chain. As we eat our meals, we pray for those whose crops have failed because of global warming. We pray for your creation, full of wonder. May we be good stewards and cherish every daffodil on the roadside. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to show your love for us. We pray for the scientists, researchers, and health advisors influencing government decisions on the coronavirus. We pray for sound and informed discussion when the vaccinations are distributed and moves to ease lockdown are made. We pray for the frontline staff, the care home workers, medics, ambulance drivers, and all hospital staff who have put themselves at risk for the sake of others. Some to be away from their families for weeks, some who've made the ultimate sacrifice and have died of the virus. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. O oh God, our comforter, Hold in your arms through our pastoral care and our family, those who are unwell. Bob and Elizabeth Harland. Lauren. Philippa Leclerc. Margaret McAllister. Grace McGivery. Steph, Tom Mounsey, 
Vittorio, Patricia Watts, and the long-term unwell, Caroline Behan, William Buncombe, Vera Edwards, Jean Gardner, Julia Jones, Kate Morgan, Jane Seal, Brett Tribe, Vera Wilnecker, and David Wilson. And those who we hold in our thoughts and prayers from the week past. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Saviour God, we pray for those who have died recently, all living with the pain of untimely death. God's comfort for their families and friends and all who remember loved ones. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the light. In you there is no darkness at all. If we walk with you, we are in communion with one another. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wherever you are, if you are with anybody, human or animal, please do offer them a sign of peace. And now please do pause for our offertory hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Glory to you, God of Abraham and Sarah, for you uphold every hope of redemption, and upon you rests eternity. In every age you have called your people to receive your blessing by faith, trusting not in their own righteousness, but the promise that rests forever on your grace. In Christ you came to bear the weight of our sin, carry our offences and take up the hope of our salvation. And through your power, the cross he bears across his shoulders has become for us the resurrection and the life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Renewing God, through the cross of Christ, you redeem our failures by welcoming us to the feast of the forgiven. As there is nothing we can give you in return for our life, send your Holy Spirit to meet us in the grace of this meal and send your Spirit upon this bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Saving God, show your church the path of life. Give each one of your children courage and wisdom to take up their cross and follow you. Stretch every heart with compassion for the heavy burdens their neighbours carry and transform all who are weighed down 
to become carriers of one another's burdens. Come alongside any who shoulder heavy cares alone and give them companions in, each walk, in walking each step. Take upon yourself the suffering of all who bear impossible weights at the demand of another, a force to labour or given no rest, until all that is bowed low in sin or weighed down by struggle is lifted up and carried by your grace and transcended in your glory ever reigning God, forever one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally together, come into our hearts. We embrace you, knowing you are already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. I receive the sacrament for myself and for all of you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is The God of Abraham Praise. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.